Welcome to Highline BI348 video number 24. Hey, if you want to download this workbook, BI348 Chapter 2 Start or the Finished File, click on the link below the video. Hey, in this video, we want to talk about the empirical rule. Now, back in our prerequisite class, we spent chapters upon chapters using the empirical rule. And it's a great model, and here's the model, because we can calculate probabilities easily using the empirical rule and our normal curve. However, we have to make sure that the distribution has a symmetrical or near symmetrical distribution. So oftentimes people use histograms. We also talked in the prerequisite class about the central limit theorem that allowed us for sample data to use the normal distribution. Now this video we want to practice calculating the probabilities. I actually have one, two, three yellow sheets here. They actually should be blue. And I want to click on each one and then just go over our three possibilities for calculating probability using the empirical rule. Now here's our bell-shaped distribution. And we have past test scores. And the distribution was normally distributed or symmetrical. We know what the mean is, so the mean for past scores was 74. The standard deviation is 10. And we need to figure out what the probability of getting a score of 64 or less is. Now, actually, this is the first of three possibilities. We can actually calculate probability at a particular x or less. We can calculate a particular, in this case, we could take the same x. We could calculate the probability of a particular x or more. Or we can do between two values. Remember, with a continuous distribution like this, we can't calculate an exact x. We're always calculating between two points, or in this case, between an x all the way down to negative infinity. Now, we use our, in this case, norm.dist or norm.inverse. Dot dist, we give it values, and it gives its probability norm.inverse, we give it probability, and it gives us a value. The s functions, dot s dis, dot s inverse, those are when we have the z values. So we're going to do this example both ways, once with just the distribution function and once with the s dot dis. So we're going to select norm dot dist. The screen tip is pretty polite. It wants the particular x. Here's our particular x comma, the mean, there's the mean, comma, standard deviation, boom, there's the standard deviation. And then we have a choice. The false, or 0, is the probability mass function. And that is only for charting. We're going to be using the cumulative distribution function. And I'm always going to put, instead of true, a 1. Now, before I hit Enter, we have to remind ourselves, the norm dot dis, and actually all the distribution functions in Excel always calculate from the lowest value up to the x value we give it. So notice we gave it a 64. So it's going to calculate from negative infinity, because this hypothetically extends forever, all the way from negative infinity up to that 64. So when we hit Enter, that's the probability from 64 or below, about 15.9%. Now we can calculate our z. Remember, that is we take the particular value minus the mean. That right there gives us the deviation. So if I entered this, that's minus 10, f2. And we want it in terms of standard deviation. So I divide it by standard deviation. And this one's going to be easy. We do this one in our head, right? Minus 1. 64 is minus 10 below 74. So of course, when we divide it by a standard deviation of 10, it gives us exactly one standard deviation below the mean. Now, if we're going to use our norm.s functions, that means the input is going to be a z value. We give it the z. That's all we need, because remember, that value already has in it the mean, the particular value, and the standard deviation. Comma, same thing. We're using 1 to calculate the probability. And it gives us exactly the same answer. 
Now let's go to our next example. Here's same test score, 74 is the mean. Standard deviation is 10. And this person got 80. And so we want to calculate the probability of getting an 80 or above equals norm. And we're going to use our dist. Now we have to be careful because the functions always go from negative infinity up to the x we give it. But let's go ahead and, hey, there's the x. That's the 80, comma, the mean, comma, the standard deviation, comma, and 1 for cumulative distribution. Now if I throw an 80 in here, it's going to give me the probability from negative infinity all the way up to the 80. That's not what we want. We want everything on the upper end. So of course, we use the complement rule and take 1, which represents 100%, and subtract probability from negative infinity up to that 80 when I control enter. That's the probability of getting a score of 80 or above. Now we can calculate a z, particular value, minus the mean close parentheses, and we want it in terms of standard deviation. So we divide it by the standard deviation, 0.6 standard deviations above the mean. Now we can calculate the probability of getting 0.6 z-score or more equals, and we're on the upper end, so 1 minus norm dot s dot dist. There's our z, comma 1, close parentheses, control enter. We get exactly the same answer. Now we want to go over to the sheet normal between. Calculating probability between, we have the same distribution. 74 is the mean. Standard deviation is 10. And we want to calculate the probability of getting a score between 90 and 75. Well, if the functions always go from negative infinity up to some x, then the way we do between is we go from negative infinity up to the bigger, that's all the area below, and we subtract a second normal distribution function that will go from negative infinity up to the lower. So imagine all of this, subtract all of that, gives us the difference. So equals norm dot dist, the x is going to be the bigger, comma, mean, comma, standard deviation, comma, 1 for cumulative. And we subtract norm dot dist, the lower, that's the smaller x, comma, mean, comma, standard deviation, comma, 1, close parentheses. That will give us the difference. So the probability of getting a score between 90 and 75 is about 40%. Now we can calculate two z's also equals the deviation. And this one's the lower particular value minus the mean. It looks like we're exactly one point above the mean. We divide that by standard deviation. And there we go, 0.1. That's number of standard deviations, z, equals the particular value, the bigger one, minus close parentheses divided by our standard deviation. And it looks like with a score of 90 or 1.6 standard deviations above the mean. Now we can calculate the difference, and it still means two functions. But since it's an S, we're putting in Z's. It's always the bigger one, comma, 1, close parentheses. And we add a second norm dot S for Z dot dist. And the Z, that's the smaller one, comma, 1, close parentheses. And guess what? We get exactly the same answer, about 40% probability or chances of getting a score between 75 and 90. Now let's go over to the sheet empirical rule practice. And I just looked up Seattle's mean gas price today. And it's $2.62.7. Hey, and the standard deviation is pretty big because Seattle has a lot of different neighborhoods with different gas prices. So we want to first try and calculate the probability of finding a gas station, randomly selecting one that has a gas price of $2.20 or less. So equals, and we use our norm.dist. 
there's our x, comma, there's our mean, comma, standard deviation, comma, 1. And this is below, so we don't have to do anything, just control enter. Wow, so the probability of, of randomly selecting a gas station in Seattle and finding $2.20 or less is like 2.6%. Now, what's the z equals the particular value minus the mean? And we want to divide it by standard deviation. So that's, wow, that's almost two standard deviations below the mean. With that z, we can use the norm.s.dist. There's the z, comma, 1, and control enter. We get exactly the same thing. How about randomly selecting a gas station and finding that it is selling gas for $2.90 or above equals norm dot dis. I'm already getting in trouble because guess what? I forgot my minus 1, but no problem. That function will give me everything from negative infinity up to $2.90. I use the complement rule, and boom. So about 10.7% chance that I could randomly select a gas station and find $2.90 or more. And the z score, number of standard deviations, we're going to take the particular value and subtract the mean and divide it by the standard deviation. So this one is 1.24 standard deviations above equals 1 minus norm.s. There's the z comma 1. Boom, we get exactly the same thing. Now, here's two other prices. Let's calculate the z for each one of these. $2.80. 18.7 so equals particular value, one cell above, minus the gas price locked with the F4 key, close parentheses, divided by the standard deviation locked with the F4 key, control enter, control C, arrow, arrow, control V. Now, Z of exactly minus 2, so this $2, 18.7 is exactly two standard deviations below the mean, and this 3.067 is exactly two standard deviations above the mean. We don't even have to do the functions to estimate, because our empirical rule says 68% of the values will lie between plus or minus one standard deviation, about 95% of the data values will lie within plus or minus three standard deviation. And here's our rule. 99% or practically all values will lie between plus or minus three standard deviations. So if I come back over here, my estimate is going to be 0.95. I'll put my estimate down here. But of course, we can use the norm.s dot dist and get the bigger z, comma 1, close parentheses, and then a second norm dot dist and get our smaller z, comma 1, close parentheses, control enter. And there is a more precise measure. If we use our norm functions or any of the distribution functions as opposed to using a rule or tables in a book, we're going to get a more accurate probability. All right, in this video, we reviewed our awesome normal distribution functions for calculating probability when our distributions have a normal distribution. And we talked about the empirical rule. All right, we have two videos left in this chapter. And when we come back in our next video, we'll talk about percentiles and quartiles. All right, we'll see you next video.